more than happy to play. And as they said on the desk, the fact that Heroic start on the T side may not bode very well for them as Astralis' CT side is known for being so, so very solid. And May just kicks things off with a briskly put in one tap. S attack now lighting up the scoreboard with two of his own. And just like that, the round's done. <laughs> they only lost two HP collectively. Astralis off to a cracker. I can't, I can't deal with this again. It's like last time they started on the T side, we were building this up to be a, a mammoth of a match and then they destroyed Vitality on it. And they started off in a similar fashion. Now, this is where things get interesting for me in all honesty, because I, I actually think both of these teams have almost paved the way for themselves on the T side of this map. Like sure, the CT side, I think a lot of different rosters can play well, but it's the Danes that have sort of shown that this map is not really anywhere near as CT sided as it used to be. We used to sit there going, oh, the pistol rounds will define whether or not you get two or three rounds in the first half or or maybe zero. Like that, that was how this map used to work. I'm, I'm thankful for the changes that were made. It's made it an exciting map to watch. Now, Astralis have gone very heavy on the rifle. Great for winning the round, but it means they have to keep things nice and clean. Glaive, he's looking to get aggressive here and has the vice alongside him. Not a kill in two rounds for the side of Heroic, and Astralis are here to play. Yes, I'm getting a bit of deja vu. I know it's early days, but yesterday <laughs> they absolutely dismantled Vitality 16-4 on Nuke. And it was every bit as one-sided as that scoreline would suggest. Now, of course, Heroic have plenty of opportunities to bounce back. But as you highlighted, Tom, not a single casualty. Great news with their very rifle-heavy buy that they picked up. And now there's only a P250 on a couple players and a few flashes sprinkled in for good measure. Big grenade damage as well, tossed in towards the ramp from Esetag. They mentioned that he's not exactly been top of the scoreboard and taking all the plaudits, but he's been solid when well, he's been called upon. And you feel like he may be called upon again ramp a few times. He does go down without any casualties. Burrock survives on 2 HP, still will heavily favor Astralis, but they can maybe at least make this a little bit more economically damaging than the previous two rounds have been. Heroic still yet to get on the bomb. What? That's a team kill. Thorn somehow kills Burrow. I didn't quite catch that. Nico's burnt to a crisp. Bomb has been dropped down and the rest of the pieces fall into I, place. What will happen there? That How was did a stray die? bullet. That was a stray bullet. 100%. I, I, I think that was who we were watching at the time. And he was aiming down at the player running across. And I, I think there was just one stray bullet that flew off and ended up killing his teammate. That's a bit of bad luck. What I will mention to you, Vince, is that that's actually quite interesting to me because of how like dominant. Yeah, it was just, it, well, oh, as you as said, it's a great bullet. Yeah. But um, over the, the matches we've seen like this year from Astralis versus Heroic, the lowest amount of rounds that Heroic have got is 12. So uh, they always make it close every single time. In fact, the only dominant maps have been in favor of Heroic with a, a couple of 16-7 victories going back to Pro League uh, Season 12. So that, that should at least make you feel a little bit better, but it could also mean that it's been coming. An S-Tag already going to be kicking things off. Dupree as well with the SMG. Uh, well, let's put it this way. Astralis have been very good at proving stats wrong so far this tournament with uh, obviously Zywoo's 91.7% not going too well when it came to Nuke. But uh, we'll see. Because this is already a bit damning going into their first fire round. It's looking so clean. Dupree already and adding another to the death toll after his MP9 gets upgraded to an NK. He's going to go walking through. All right. Maybe a little bit much for my liking, but hey, he's feeling confident. Keep Heroic on the back foot. Does get caught, though, from Squeaky. Was Dupree yesterday that was really leading the charge alongside the Vice. And yeah, as you highlighted, Tom, only three or so weeks ago, it's actually Astralis on the receiving end of the battering. They lost Nuke to the hands of Heroic 16-7. So, in recent memory, they do have a bit of data to go off. I don't know how much Astralis have learned from that loss. Obviously, Glaze's been back a little bit longer now. And the troops seemingly like they're getting their act together. It's another very convincing, comfortable rifle round that goes the way of Astralis. And Storm on minus one, unfortunate with that P250 team kill earlier on, but it just goes to show the complete lack of kills that they've actually picked up on Heroic and so we move into round five. Oh, that's that's ridiculous. 25% of all of Cadian's kills at DreamHack 4 
before this game were versus Astralis. And and that that just proves how long that game was. As said, like one map went 28 to 24. So obviously those stats were padded, but he had a mammoth series. Like that's, I would go as far to say, I think that's the best match I may have ever seen Kadian play. He got almost 100 kills across the three maps. He went 97 and 59. The next best in the server was Dupree with 81 and you have to remember Astralis won that series so he got plus 38 and lost pretty absurd isn't it but so far shut down as have the rest of heroic looks like a bit of a technical issue maybe coming into play here play is deep in thought and gonna figure out what the issue is in terms of the buy here though as well Tom as we move into round five, it's not as if Heroic have tons of money at their disposal. Ordered looking like more of a half it. buy. Ordered by it. Sorry. They just, I don't understand why his room's so dark. <laughs> like, turn some lights on, buddy. This is this got to be bad for your eyes. See, this is how you know you're getting old, Tom. I see that and I'm like, isn't that straining his eyes? Isn't, <laughs> isn't that just wrecking him? <laughs> He doesn't care. He feels comfortable. And I'm just thinking young. his eyes are burning. Maybe we've been playing wrong. Actually, I say that. I do exactly the same thing. But you know what? Uh, my eyes aren't quite as valuable as uh, the talent of Tess is. We're acting like his parents in this situation. But the, the pause has ended. The vice looking to go straight back. Like the, it, the break didn't change anything. This man on nuke looked ridiculous as we saw him. Like, Dupree definitely took the star of the show, but the vice was ruining anybody that came into his path, including Zywu on this map. Overpass was also a great map for the vice. Obviously, this round is just pistols, but at the same time, you, you want to be getting something done, Heroic. Yeah, even though Dupree started to outshine the vice towards the end, the vice at one point, I want to say had 11 and 1 and something like 180 ADR early on against Vitality, he was the linchpin early on in those rounds to just set everything in motion, and then it, it became the Dupree show when things got a little bit more scrappy. Esetag on to Stown, who only with a pistol, wasn't really expecting too much out of that. Kadian goes down to Device, that's a 3k for the star player on Astralis. Now Tessis, he's not going to fare too much better, 5-0. And another clean sweep round. That's what, three out of five, I think, where Astralis have not lost a single player. Astralis uh, are looking scary, to say the least. I, I will say, of all the teams who've seen this tournament, I think Heroic are definitely the best at coming back. Uh, they seem so resilient. And in, in terms of mental fortitude for such a young team, they have a lot of it. So I, I don't think they're going to be crumbling anytime soon. They knew picking this map that they would be going up against a powerhouse. Over the last three months, Astralis have a 93% win rate on this map. They have one loss, and that is against Heroic. Now, they're already very close to doing better than they did last time, Vince, and this is a much faster take. This is what I love to see with this Heroic roster. Dupree didn't even notice they'd walked into the site. I don't know if the grenades shrouded his judgment a little bit, but that's round done already. What the hell is Tessis's sensitivity? It was like he was spinning around 360, looking at all the angles at once. He's got eyes in the back of his head, he's a chameleon. And with those opening picks, as you said, the round is over. So, they waited a while, heroic, but finally they have struck. And it's a fast play, and it catches Astralis. And I completely agree with you. I think heroic are one of the most tenacious teams. I mean, just go back to the previous best of three that we casted. They got battered on Vertigo, came back one train 16-3 like nothing had happened. This team has no problems when it comes to rebounding, so definitely don't write them off. And that round is more indication as to exactly why that needs to be taken into account. They do stay three guns, and because of how flawless these rounds have been, Astralis have tons of cash at their disposal. So they're looking at two or three more rounds before they have to think about saving. Or economy, I should say. Hmm. I'm pretty sure this is a reference that not many people will get. It would probably just be Blair that will be giggling away. But I do wonder if he actually has high sensitivity or if he's got like Zoking arms. I'm, I'm sure you've seen Zoking play. If you haven't, uh, I haven't watched enough Asian Counter-Strike. The man plays really low sensitivity, 
but it looks like his mouse is alive and he's currently fighting to hold on to it. It is a uh, very impressive and the fact that he manages to play as, as well as he does is something that still blows me away. If, if you haven't seen it, I'm sure if you Google like Zo King playing Counter Strike, it will come up and uh, you can enjoy what everybody what else. It, it is, I think it's spelled Z H O K I N G. So and, great, uh, yeah. you might not have got that one off the bat, but there you go. Five to one. We've got another technical pause, unfortunately. It does give a little bit of a break to either side. And obviously, the, the way it works in online tournaments, there's not really the, the harshly enforced rules about talking in between. So, uh, they should be able to have a little bit of an atter about what's what they're going to change, what they're going to do. And for Heroic, this, this almost act like they love their tactical pauses because firstly, they, they have those moments where a lot of the time they'll just go for another very aggressive fast play. And even when you think like so even when you beat them, we saw it on Overpass earlier in the day, even when you beat them on a round and you think that that's when they're going to stop doing that, they'll just do it again just to try and catch you off guard. And I think it's a calling style that only ever works if you have full faith in in your in-game leader. And it was it was actually one of the things that I always respected quite a lot about Freakazoid is uh, when, when he was working with Sean Gares, that was actually where we saw some incredible play out from someone like him because he would just, he was obedient. He would just do exactly what Sean said. And it's what we're seeing from Heroic right now is that if Cadian makes a call, it's gospel. They will do it, whether it's ridiculous, as, as we've seen previously in the tournament, four players running up mid vertigo with p90s if he makes that call that's what they're doing and it, it makes this team so terrifying I, I do wonder maybe in the future if we do see some of these members part ways i hope it doesn't happen but i wonder if these same individual players will have as much success with maybe an in-game leader they don't necessarily respect or one not at the same level as someone like Cadian. well that's that is kind of what tom touched on before too slow, Astralis Elliot. Come on. Astralis have <laughs> only lost once in recent memory, and that was to the hands of Heroic. It was the 16-7 loss. So already Astralis nearly posting the same amount of rounds very early on as they did last time. Hopefully this uh, technical issue is nothing too serious. It has lasted a little while, so it's always a bit of a concern. But Heroic will have AKs and plenty of utility allocated to them. They had enough for an AWP. They decided not to drop the AK and upgrade to that, which is understandable. Might want to keep themselves mobile and get in the face of Astralis again. Yeah, I, I think on this map especially, and unless you're literally going to be working picks outside or maybe going for one of those like cheeky plays where you blow up the door and try and get Cadian to get an opening pick. I, I think it's very, very specific orpers that will be going for for like aggressive plays. One I actually really enjoyed watching was uh, in the previous iteration of Envy during the North American Pro League was uh, Nifty. The way he played outside was almost just like a battle orb. Like he would just run outside and post up and just try and find opening picks and the rest of his team almost worked it, it, as a completely separate entity to him. And it was really interesting because he used it to almost hold off any rotations, which is something Cadian would also do at points. But uh, yeah, definitely a, a different sort of orping to what we normally see on this map, which is basically just to try and work openers. There was that age old conversation as well about Heroic and Astralis and North as who's the best Danish team. But honestly, I don't think North. that's really relevant anymore. I think at this stage you say who is the best team out of these two squads. I think Heroic yeah. have got to that point where they can make an argument for like we, we're actually breathing down the neck of Astralis to just be the outright best. Not, not just about Denmark. We're not in a small pond anymore. We're in the ocean. You want to take this for ourselves and become the Apex Predators. Yeah, I, I think that the interesting thing has been like with this online period is we have seen the rise of a lot of different rosters and being able to sort of practice from home. We've seen the teams that are willing to put a lot more time into the game and uh, the teams that have now started to pull in boot camps because they realized how important it will be. And it, it definitely shows the differences like Fnatic obviously having a much better performance this tournament than what we've seen recently. Also, the likes of NIP note that they were also on a boot camp during this event. They played very well now having a their full roster back vitality as well that well so far they've been the best team in the tournament they're waiting in the grand final for both of these two teams i think heroic are the only ones out of the the top five even that are well maybe even a big a big playing i think bigger on a boot camp i'm not sure but either way out of the top five i think heroic are the only ones that are actually still sticking at home 
but I've obviously just been grinding it and seem to still make things work. And it was even something mentioned by Storm, the fact that him playing at the offices, even just that, even though he was on his own, he, he didn't have any of his mates around him, that's still enough for him to perform at a higher standard. So I do wonder if there are tournaments coming up for Heroic where they might opt to try and, and play on a LAN setting, because obviously they are all in Denmark, so they don't have any of the problems that some of these international rosters like FaZe might have, or uh, even, even if you look at like G2 or someone like that. So we'll, we'll see. Maybe they'll do that for upcoming tournaments. Maybe they won't need it. We are back into the action though. Technical issues have been remedied. And Heroic keeping with those AKs as we mentioned. Meanwhile, Astralis, two Orcs. All picked up on device. Plenty of money still in the bank. Glaive using that smoke to allow him the opportunity to try and fire out. We've already seen device in this very position earlier on with an M4. This time it's the AWP and it's the same result again. He tries to repeat, but the next two kills go the way of Heroic. And now they want to try and rummage through the smoke. Glaive tries to pincer into action with a double spray, but he only can get one. And now Dupree stands up, tries to deliver, but it's him next on the chopping block, leaving Esetag one on three. He's dropped the bomb down, but his head gets cleaved off and Heroic strike twice in a row. Yeah, the way that Heroic uh, throw their smokes outside also makes it fairly easy for them to isolate a lot of these jewels. Like they, they end up pushing through the initial one, and then it takes very aggressive plays for the CT side to try and hold onto that control. Now, for Device, obviously that first kill works out in his favor. The, the re-peak's risky, but at the same time, you don't normally expect to just be insta-domed by someone facing back out, especially when they've had to turn onto the angle. And then from then onwards, it just became a... a trading for heroic which i think is something that they they're going to do very very well so second round on the board the thing is with the the save that came through previously and the amount of money that was actually in play already for the side of astralis i imagine there is still going to be an investment back into this round from them so uh it's an, a slightly extended break but i imagine once again there will be a buy Yes, indeed, there shall be. Unfortunately, that does mean there is another technical issue, probably the same one I'd imagine, uh, to do with networking, which is always a bit of a nightmare. But it does also put the momentum a little bit back in favor of Heroic, I'd say. I mean, after Astralis, take a quick 5-5-0, a few timeouts here now. And this is where that resolve, that concentration will be tested. Heroic have obviously already played today, best of three, which was started, I believe, Danish time at 1 p.m. We're now getting towards the night time. So these guys have been battling away for the entirety of the day. Astralis have been able to sit back and basically watch, try and pick up some tells, maybe some reads, and spring them into action. We'd love to break down the game so far, Tom, but we haven't really seen a great deal, to be honest. So there's not really much to say. Mm -hmm. But I think the interesting thing that we could mention is obviously the, the main reason that everybody's here. The money's nice. Also, you've got some Pro Tour points on offer, which are always fantastic. But the main thing is the RMR points. And for both of these teams, it's, it's a slightly different story. Obviously, both right near the top of the moment after this event, currently in third and fourth, but that's all subject to change based off this match. The other thing as well is we know that Astralis are about to make another change back to Zipix. So they're going to take a pretty nasty hit to their points when that comes through. So they're looking to try and really bolster things up currently in a legend position. But as said, with that change and with the points that both them and Heroic will intertwine depending on who wins this game. So definitely going to be interesting. You've got Big now in fifth place. And for uh, some teams, it, it really is going to be fairly damaging. Like uh, if obviously all the rumors are true, which I imagine they are at this point with Nico like joining uh, G2, if, if that's going to be for a change rather than just adding him in as a sixth member, which I'll be honest, I, I'm not sure Nico would be signing too much for a contract. If it was like, yeah, you probably play. I imagine someone's going. Then uh, that's going to be them taking a hit. And they're currently in seventh place. So there could be some risers. And there's some teams, for example, like OG. OG didn't even play the first RMR event. They, they had a zero points, but you have to consider if we're about to see like G2 make a move, Astralis have to make a move, OG might be moving into like one of the further up spots without even playing the first one, which it, it, for me at least is hugely impressive. The other one to mention, which might be a big surprise, but obviously finishing fourth at this event, NIP are currently moving into a, like a top three spot. 
So it, it really is all up for grabs. And the most terrifying thought is there's currently teams like Mouse Sports who are not making it to the major. You've got Ents who are not making it as well. North are right on the brink. FaZe kind of right on the brink. And as mentioned, they're another team where, well, if Nico is removed, that's technically another change. So that's more points lost for them. So if there is going to be one or two more RMR events, there could be teams that are not only fighting to get to a legend spot, but even fighting to get into the major. Like Mouse Sports, Ents and FaZe not being at a major. Okay, maybe Ents haven't quite been as good as we'd like, but not being one of the top 11 teams in Europe? Come on, that, that would be unacceptable. All right, we have been informed that we will be cutting to a short, hopefully, break while these issues get resolved, guys. So stay tuned and we'll have the rest of the action coming up. Gentlemen, thank you very much for your patience while we had some technical issues. So we're hoping, I've been informed that we should be good to jump back into the saddle very shortly, Tom. We have all 10 players on the server, which is great to see. And if you did just join us in amongst that pause, it was 5-2. Astralis went 5-0 up. Heroic won two in a row. They've brought the economy down a peg or two, but Astralis still certainly in this. But obviously you can't have a pause of that length, Tom, without mentioning that momentum-wise, this is basically reset now. Yeah, for sure. I, I think that this is going to be one of those things where it's, it's a completely new match. Like, obviously, uh, we've had some players have to move things around. Like, There's been a, a few tech issues with S-Tag, and he's basically just completely changed his location. So... That in itself, like we mentioned the positives of Storm basically saying like, now I get to play at the office, I'm playing much better, which as chances are that's more psychological than anything else. But uh, for Esther Tag, it might be completely different where, okay, he's just had to uproot his position of, of maybe being quite chill and just having a nice time playing some Counter-Strike to, oh God, I've had to move all the way across to a different part of Denmark to try and play a different match. So. Uh, yeah, it'll be interesting to see if it, it does continue with the same vein of like now Heroic or on the comeback or if it is going to be a Astralis looking to break back straight away. Obviously, the reason their money is so good is those first five rounds were very, very clean. In fact, a few of them, they didn't lose a single player. And then they had a round where they also saved some weaponry. So although Astralis have lost a couple of rounds and they have been fairly dominant for Heroic, Astralis have not let their money slip. Well, we'll see if the players are still warmed up. This really is about how versatile and adaptive both teams are. We're back into the action in our consolidation finals. The winner faces Vitality, the loser is gone. And Device, right off the bat, taking tons of damage outside. Down to 51 from pretty much just HEs. Astralis hold on while Heroic take outside control. Slightly different iteration of smokes this time a faster set that allows them to get down in towards the b site and we get to actually see a rotation from astralis we'll get one in it will be s tag interestingly he's actually the one playing the awp which is not normally the man we focus on with that trusty gun device though maybe this is why he peeks in with the rifle sprays down to the flank from blade is also very well timed but he won't actually get anything just yet down, making the most of that momentary lapse in judgment from Glaive going back outside. And the late flank paying out dividends on Heroic. They do even the odds back again. Stown now taking the initiative, pushing into main. Remember, he did get a team kill earlier on, so he actually has two frags. He was a minus one at one stage. He has been a man mountain today for Heroic. He was massively instrumental in their previous victory against NIP in the first best of three of today's proceedings. 23 seconds. Heroic now pulling the trigger. Mixing up the pace, accelerating to the site, looking to erode it down. In the next few moments, Dupree round the smoke. It's fragged almost instantly. Does dink Nico down to 8 HP. But Astralis, after getting the first two picks, now very potentially slipping and sliding out of this round. Their economy will be cut short again. Stown won't be taking anywhere near enough damage to justify that push up into heaven. And with that play not working out for S-Tag, 
they may very well just save here. Astralis can't really go in for this. They have no idea where the remainder of the T's are. They're still pressuring it, though. To be fair to Astralis, they're still at least putting pressure down on Heroic. But now they realize it's too little too late. They save Heroic three in a row. Yeah, this is one that I feel like really should have been theirs. Like the devices, heroics were enough to get them a, a two-man advantage at least for the moment. But the trades came back thick and fast. Another strong round from heroic, and what started off as a, a five-zero start, and we were starting to get scared that this was going to be similar to what we saw when Vitality played versus the Danes. It, it, it's turned into a, a pretty close game, and and this is something again that I, I think needs to be highlighted. Both of these teams have prominent T sides. Like this is not a weakness for either of these sides. Now a fast pace change, something that's loved by the side of Heroic and something I love to witness as well. Two instant frags, you double orbs you say? Is that something you want to be bringing into this round? Well, it doesn't matter. You've got no opportunity to use them. In fact, one of them's already hit the deck and they're hunting these frags now. They've had enough of Astralis holding onto their weaponry. They're looking to try and shut them out econ with economy as well. The perfect counter and also a perfect play when Astralis may still be dusting away the cobwebs and the technical issues. So really a great call on Cadian paying out perfectly. He's still to, yet to get a kill, but his teammates are doing more than their fair share of the lifting. And on device joined alongside Glaive at the back of CT spawn will be pressured. There's more than enough money for Heroic to run in. They could even lose all three of their players at this point, and it wouldn't be the worst case as long as they can take one of these guns away. But the Vice is holding on. Even with the HE landing on top of him, he still will stand. And that affords them the luxury of another buy. So well held by Astralis, but again, Heroic. That's now four in a row. Ed, it's a weird situation. Like, Astralis are consistently being put into positions where they can't actually win the rounds, even with constant buys coming in this one finally sees a little bit of vulnerability to it with Dupree actually being dropped down to an SMG and well see you later Glaive first kill on the board for Cadian although I'm sure he doesn't really care this is something he has openly admitted when it comes to his team is when they feel like they need a change when they need he needs to focus on helping the other individuals within his team he realizes that his own individual form has to be sacrificed now we're starting to see some of the heroic players come back into their own. This is also likely where you'll start seeing Cadian get more frags on the board. Oh Ooh. my goodness, that HE. Nuke has landed. And now Esetag looks to clean up the straggling HP bars. Does get one before he's traded out, but the player advantage maintains in hand of heroic. After that entry with the AWP, Dupree, MP9, Taylor made for low HP players, but Burrup was healthy. And he remains healthy, still 100 HP. Magisk gets smoked out just as he opens the door. And Device pushes down, gets one, traded out instantly. They heard him burning and charring over the Molotov. Magisk flashing himself into an early grave. And Heroic now have tied it up. The only issue with that for Cadian is he's loving it. He's hype. He's feeling it right now, Tom. And why the hell not? It would feel great to get back into the matchup, clapping and applauding his teammates. The downside is if he's sacrificing his own gameplay and he's Europa, that's where they could run into some issues. But now he's focusing on himself and he's landing shots left and right. I, I think that is one thing that, again, you really have to give credit to Cadian for is like, I think he knows when it's more important for the other players on his team to be successful. Like we will see him have quote unquote selfish rounds where he will be dropped an AWP and he'll look to be the hero. Like that, that's something that he's more than happy to do. It doesn't necessarily mean he's always sacrificing. It's just at the right times. So uh, yeah, he's, he's stepped up when needed in this round. It's going to put five to five on the board. And they're still purchases, but they're getting progressively worse for Astralis. Like we've seen them now have a couple of really solid buys in a row. This is probably the worst one yet. Yeah, it certainly is. And th that really is a credit to just how dominant they were in the first five rounds, but how intelligent they've played these sort of save positions when they know that the round is untenable. They back away, save two weapons here or there. But as you highlight, if they were to concede this, there's no more buy on the horizon. They'll have to make do of what they can save, if anything. And Heroic, a very real chance to actually gain the lead now for the first time 
in our best of three. Nuke the first playground. Bit worried if there was a missed pick from Heroic. Proving us wrong in that mantle, that's for sure. And they've taken a bit of ramp control. They actually don't fully push behind it. Nico's edging his way downstairs. May come head to head with Glaive momentarily, checking his angles, making sure all those angles are covered, but in doing so, gives his back up to Glaive and gets punished. The rest of Heroic are anticipating Dupree's position, HE behind the Molotov. He never had a hope of getting any frags. He was trying to bite them out for May just to spring into action. He's put himself two at the back of the site, and Glaive with the rotation takes down an extra two for a 3k. Yeah, very well played from Glaive. Obviously starting off for the rest of the team, but this flank towards the end was what actually won them the round. Magisk also did a fantastic job at staying alive. I do like that little combo, though. Like, it, it's uh, an extra $300 expended by Heroic that not only does it, like, do, obviously do extra damage, but it also leaves you a little bit stunned. So the chance of you actually getting out of the Molotov is even less likely. It's a shame it doesn't really work out for them, but they have stacks of cash. And on the other side, Magisk is now down what is a shotgun. Device, however is going to be the one to get the opener, but Tesla has been able to take position over him. It doesn't seem to matter, though, with Device landing almost every single shot he's given. S-Tag tries to spray them down and does a hell of a lot of damage, but the bomb is going to be planted. And while that's money secured, at least for Heroic, the round, however, looks unlikely. It does look unlikely, but it's not as if there's a ton of incendiaries or HEs that they can burst back into the site with. So Stone and Burrup's low HP may not end up mattering a huge amount if they can get those crisp one-taps into effect. Down though, XM is tailor-made for these kind of incursions. And will be invaded again, Burrup, using that 20 HP to devastatingly storm effect before Dupree spins around, takes him down. Check the time, it's low. Cadian could feasibly pull this one off. Spray's not on point though, he gets punished. It's super close, but Astralis will just about get the defuse. One thing that hasn't changed from last time on Nuke, sure, Dupree is not quite like as stunning as he was last time, but Device, dear Lord, the man's on 13 kills. It's easy to forget the early streak was a lot down to him performing to an incredibly high standard. And sure, there have been a few rounds where he's just been saving the AWP, but hey, it, it's worth the save. Seven to five, tactical pause taken from Heroic. I, I think it's always going to be the case, especially on Nuke, that... Your focus of your pauses should be on the T side. That's where you ultimately, as an in-game leader, you're going to be able to have the most impact. Whereas on your CT side, sure, you'll probably have setups. You'll have ways that you counter certain things. But unless things are going atrociously wrong, you're probably just going to be sticking to mainly default rounds. So this is where, I guess, Cadian earns his big bucks. This is where he gets his paycheck, earns his worth within the team. Because after what has been a decent streak back to get them in, Still not quite up as high as they would be. Also, Tess is having a bit of a quiet start to this match. Like, sure, we mentioned how good Storm was earlier in the day. But Tess, especially in that third and final map, was someone who came up alongside him and Cadian, in fact, to basically drag that one home versus Nip. There's an interesting part of the, the interview that I really picked up on with Stown when he was talking to Frankie, where discussing the matchup against Astralis, he said the, the comms can sometimes be really hectic. It's a really important, big match for them. And I wonder, sometimes you forget just how young these players are. They may not have a ton of experience when it comes to these kind of situations. You're in a consolidation, finals, the RMR, so many points on the line. Does he start to get in his own head? Does he have that clarity to continue to perform? S attack, M4 in hand, wielding against Tessis, the first two picks. Go the way of Astralis and Heroic after winning five on the bounce and looking invulnerable in part and now being brought back down to Earth. Storm though, aggression. We saw him picking up the second AWP on the CT sides. We know he has it within him to make this gun shine, but only has 40 seconds allocated to have his impact felt. Borup and Cadian making moves down ramp. Esetag, after getting the first pick on ramp, has fallen back behind the silo and is eagerly anticipating that this push is very possible. They will look to try and annul his partnership with that site as Stown is faking as if they could be pushing on A, trying to keep some of these players interested. S attack, undeterred, his focus is razor sharp. 
And his resolve is up to the task. Eight seconds to play with and the T's have given it up. They look to save. Astralis win again. Counter-terrorists win. Are actually going to keep the two orbs? Like, this was not something they needed to pick up. I was quite surprised, in fact, that Storm, sure, taking it for a moment, maybe to have a peek outside, but to keep it afterwards? That's a little bit peculiar, especially on a map like Nuke, where but sometimes we even say teams don't even need to use one orb. So uh, this is going to be a weird round. I, in fact, this may be a round that I don't think I've ever seen on Nuke. Is an eco round with two orbs on the T side. It does ruin any idea or prospect of playing aggressively. Because you, <laughs> as good as Stone and KDN are, don't get me wrong here, but it's not really a mobile weapon, is it? Glaive, though, getting one, traded back by Nico, and the T's actually lead by a player in this round. More aggression around the corner. Dupree tries to flick in and gets it done. And that's maybe where having an extra assault rifle or, hell, even a P250 or a Deagle could have worked out better because once Cadian missed, his life was forfeit and Dupree survives with 3 HP. They're still not out of the woods just yet, Astralis, but at least there's a bit of sunlight between the trees. This is much closer than I ever thought it would be, but I, I guess when you don't have one on the DT side currently, you have players peeking in with that option. Like, the, the fact is, if Cadian's able to hit his shot, or even if maybe he just has a pistol in that situation, he probably gets the kill onto Dupree. This is a slightly interesting angle, though. Yeah, I was about to say, if, if Tessus predicted that, I would have been very surprised. S-Tag still playing aggressively. And now it's left all onto Nico. One versus three. 25 seconds left. The thing is, even saving here, like, sure, you're going to have the AWP for the next round, but it's going to leave a really awkward situation because he can drop one over. Storm could potentially take the orb, but then he would have to have an SMG. So either way, there's going to be something in this round that's a, a little bit off for them in terms of their finances. Either that or maybe Kadian drops a rifle and he takes the AWP, but... And I, I think the Heroic have sort of put themselves into a spot financially that they never really wanted to be in. Meanwhile, in our other match on the B stream, OG. Looking like they may very well hold on to this post plant. Excellent work. They move 12-7 in the lead in the first map against Sprout. Meanwhile, though, a game that has a lot more bearing on the overall outcome of DreamHack. Open fall. Astralis jockeying for position, a chance to get their revenge against Vitality, perhaps, or maybe Heroic will turn this back around on their Danish brethren. Final round of the half, though, as you were kind of alluding to there, Tom, you have a bit of a juggling of weaponry, and Stown is dropping down to a Galil. But at least the Rock have enough to play with, and plenty of utility allocated to them. Glaive forced out of position. It does give quite a bit of map control available. Odd smoke. I don't think that was intentional, but you know what? Given quite a bit of control over to device. And Tess says, I don't know if they will have expected him to get this far. This could create quite an awkward situation because he's managed to bypass device without him realizing and storm well. He just about gets away with that kill. The problem is device is going to get one for free. They've managed to sneak past him, but he's also found a loophole within the defense. And actually, Device has given the information to Debris that they could have heaven control. They've somehow made this one work for them, and they're starting to clean things up, Vince. It leaves Storm, the only man with a kill in this round for his side. Two HP, four kills, and 30 seconds. I was going to say in a dream, but honestly, this could quickly turn into a bit of a nightmare. It like is a said, nightmare. Yeah, I mean, you, you're painting the picture, Tom. It's, it's bleak at best, isn't it? Even if he can somehow get a plant down with all of the CT staying together on the upper site, of course, he does have the bomb. He wants to try and nullify a couple of these okay. players down. I love the idea. He can get a plant off the back of this in amongst the smoke. But again, a single bullet and he's gone. In actual fact, he gets denied. As do Heroic, it will be 10-5 to Astralis after a 5-0 lead and a technical issue. But we'll be back after the break to see if they can convert side and Tom I know you've mentioned this a couple of times but it's not as if this will get any easier for Heroic because Astralis's T side it's pretty damn good 
Yeah, and this is their pick. Something all to, to mention just slightly. We're very lucky. We've got the three best European teams. <laughs> oh my god! Okay, device, take take the seat. You, you've you've got my attention, that's for sure. Let's see what he could do with it. Those were there's a reason you've dropped this guy a P250, right? Like that was ridiculous. Thankfully, Cadian's come along and said, <laughs> "Okay, that's quite enough of that." And he even gets two back himself. They've made this pistol round very interesting indeed. And Barup has spotted them rotating back towards the A side. In fact, they run into him once. He comes back round and they run into him again. He really is playing a game of ring around the rosy. And he's actually going to be there once more. <laughs> Hashtag finally puts him down. Uh, it's like there's two of him. There's twins of Barup that are both trying to fight in the server at once. But eventually it's left on to Tessis. A poor game from him so far. 2-14. and 14. Someone we need to see step up if they are going to make this grand final. A pistol victory might be enough to do it, but they're both waiting around this corner. He needs two quick taps, and instead, Glaive is going to close this. I love that cam. It's basically just viewing nothing. Yeah, I mean, maybe at this point, test is turn the light on, Chief. <laughs> maybe that would have uh, an improvement on the, the performance but yeah I mean he, he is a great player and that's one of the main reasons that we highlight it because it, it really is quite eye-catching don't expect to see him down in the doldrums there incredible aim incredible player but he's just not shown up yet S tag did nearly 400 utility damage that. Jeez. I was going to ask for that stat because he had two like ridiculous nades earlier. Ma yeah, maybe one round. Tessis yeah. is, is just like doing like a, every time he gets a kill, he gets to light a candle in his room. <laughs> Too much? That would that would explain <laughs> why the room's so dark. Tom, yeah. I'm sorry, Tessis. I, I'm, I'm a big fan, I swear. But I like being mean sometimes, as uh, most people do. Nonetheless. We are going to see an investment. Now, I mentioned this earlier in the tournament, something that I didn't want to see carry over from Asian Counter-Strike, which was the 4D. And uh, it came it came true. It was Carrigan. He gets three kills with the Deagle. Uh, we'll see if the curse has still continued. Can Heroic pull something off? Arcadian, the scout wheel has already been tacked tons. There's a good flashbang, but it's affecting his DTs just as much as the Ds. Nico, so confused and bemused, he actually tries to one deek his own teammate down in secret. And in doing so, gives his back up to Estatag. An awkward start, but it seems that Astralis' superior firepower is now coming to the forefront. And it was Caden who was tagged first. He still stands alongside Tessis, who's making moves up via Squeaky and Vent. He has also been dispatched. And it looks good for a 12-5 lead with Cadian trying to save the scout. Yeah, it may not seem like the, the greatest save in the world, but obviously with the amount of damage he can do with tags and then give his teammates an opportunity in the next round with the USPs, it will be heartbreaking if this, this continues, though, for Tessus. Because this is not the norm. For, obviously, he is one of the... A new members of this roster, the the rookie, if anything, but he's not even the youngest on the team. That's how ridiculous Thorn has been. He, he definitely might be just crumbling under the pressure. It's not something I expect, though. I think it is just one of those maps. And as we've sort of mentioned, like one thing that Heroic can definitely do is come back into things. It was a straight up dome as well. Teammates, like, cheers, mate. Like, what about the deserve that? I'm trying to help you out here. It's but like yeah, the I mean, right click knife in the back when you're playing that's MM. Born. It's like, oh, you, you, why have you done that? I now have 70 HP. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. But he had 50 kills in the series against Nip, which is more kills than anyone on Nip had. Glaive onto Nico. It is effectively an Nico round. But then you also look at the, the overall stats on Tessis. Statistically, he is one if not their best performing player. 1.17 impact, 80 average damage per round. That's more than Device, by the way. So this is a guy that can be an absolute powerhouse. And that's why it catches us off guard so much when he's not performing, because you know what he's capable of doing. And he definitely is a player that, if they are going to turn this around, not just Nuke, but I mean the best of three overall, he definitely needs to have a resurgence. He needs to have Cadian maybe have just a couple of quiet words and encourage him a little bit. You saw Cadian when he was starting to 
pop off and get kills applauding his teammates. He looked really hyped, really pumped, but now that they've gone down so many rounds, I doubt that's going to be the case. Stown at least gets the one. Maybe they can save a glill out of this round, but that's basically all they can hope for. Nice shot on to Dupree. 12 HP remains, though. Regardless, Astralis will have a 13th round. Yeah, interestingly as well, obviously we mentioned the performance of Cadian last time these two teams played. Uh, one thing to mention is that Tessus also played poorly for his standards in that match as well. So it might just be a, a thing that facing off against Astralis, maybe he just finds it difficult. Obviously, it is Astralis, so I think a lot of people do. But also something that Estag mentioned when he was even playing within Heroic is that within his country, it is pretty much a thing that you just want to play for Astralis. Even when they weren't the best team in the world, that's what everybody thinks. It is the team to play for, so you never know. There might just be a, an added thing there for him. I'm hoping it won't be the case throughout this series. And well, if they are going to make any sort of resurgence, this ragtag buy is going to have to be a successful one. Utility already looking poor after just 30 seconds gone on the clock. And more worryingly is how much ground Esteg has been able to get this early on. Huge kill, though, on Heroic, taking squeaky control, making it theirs. Stown trading up to the AK. Still going aggressive as well. Love this. Absolutely love this play. So many teams against Astralis retreat into their shell and just hope for the best. But Heroic are taking the initiative, trying to make Astralis a little bit more uncomfortable, playing the mind games, but this could backfire. He goes out one too many times and he's been punished and that gives a chance for Astralis to get back in. But the door's been closed and it's Burrup that slams it shut with his M4. Device and Estatag with 38 seconds, trying to retrieve the bomb and also the round. Device though does go into Burrup and with 30 seconds now on a 2 on 3 this is still winnable on Astralis. But Device actually backing away to spawn. He may not agree. Yeah, there's still an awful lot for them to do in this case. And, well, it seems like they are going to be just saving the weaponry they have. It confirms a buy for the next round. So if, if they don't think they're going to be able to do it, it's definitely worth just keeping that weaponry forward. And... For Heroic, it gives them at least a little bit of a breather. They will have enough to juggle some weaponry around and at least invest back into this one. But for Astralis, they've, they've got rounds to play with. They don't have to risk everything. They're not in a situation where they have to try and just take all-out risks for no reason. And even though, if anything, I would have loved to see it happen, especially with how well these two players have been performing. My device currently 19 and 7, and Esetag as well, 14 and 5. They have been two of the highest performing players on Astralis, but the reason they are so dominant is the fact that everybody on their team has been impressive so far. All of smokes has been built up outside. Oh, this time to the smoke and it's Esetag that's on the receiving end. Device well flashed, still connecting the dots on Tanico. And that offers up a little bit of outside control. Stown, not only with the opening pick, but doing a lot of damage through that smoke. And Cadian comes in again. Tessis does strike onto Magisk. And it seems like Heroic oh, is no. starting to awaken, but Stown's been caught by Dupree. Could be a round for him to at least gain back a little bit of confidence. Device is going to go walking in. That's a second freebie. The two kills he's got are relatively simplistic ones, but they make those stats look a little bit better. And although that sounds silly, like obviously there's always the thing of like, you should have your uh, tab unbound. No matter what, I think you're going to know that this hasn't been the best of games. Dupree, though, looking to be a, a little bit slimy in this round. Sneak his way through behind. The problem is bomb control is there for Heroic, so no matter, no matter where he comes from, there is going to be somebody keeping an eye on that angle. 30 seconds left. He has an awful lot to do, but Cadian, this could be one for free. He's going to go looking for the second player. The first one is for free, but the time now is ticking, and instead, Dupree's going to do what Device did in the last round, say, thank you very much. I'll take that AWP into my hands, and you know what? You're not going to even be able to afford one, I don't think, for the next round. Maybe Cadian will actually have enough, but it might be a little bit more awkward than they would have liked. Counter-terrorists win. 
I think Dupree wanted that shank kill. The only reason he didn't go for it <laughs> is because his back was to the wall, and it's always awkward in those kind of hitboxes. I would not have been surprised if he went for the knife, but Tess's two big, big kills, massively impactful, and Astralis decide to drop a tactical timeout. They know this is an integral fulcrum point in this game. If they are successful, Heroic in real trouble. But if Heroic win, it's another reset, and they're on the fast track to potentially 10 rounds. It looks like OG have converted the first map lead on train. They take it 16-14, incredibly close against Sprout. I have to say, like, there's been a few teams that have surprised me for multiple different reasons. Obviously, I was a bit disappointed to see Mouse Sports go out so early, but they were in the group of death. Also, G2 not quite having the tournament I would have liked to see from them, but we know that roster changes are likely going to be coming. Sprout, for the other reason. I, I think they've been really impressive for a team that, like, if you go back a few months, we're, we're basically just fighting in, in the likes of MDL. They've now come on to the back to back tournaments and actually had a few upset victories against teams. I, I didn't necessarily expect it. So if they can keep it up, I really look forward to the future of that squad. Force by comes out. KD swatting away Glaive in midair with the AWP. Excellent flick across. And Tessis is playing up close. Smoke into his eyes. But he can hold position and allow Kadian now to rotate. I say hold position. He's actually pushed behind the back of them. And another two kills for Tessis. He could be in for more, but Magus gone the drive by. Takes off his head. It's at the cost of 90 HP. The bomb oh. was dropped. That's information. Oh. Sound wants the knife. He wants no. to stand, but the vice. <laughs> Spins around, he saves himself the embarrassment, but he will not save himself in terms of his life. He goes down, and keep in mind, this was a force buy for Astralis. They have no money left in the bank. I love the audacity to do that to one of the, probably the best players ever to touch Counter-Strike and you're sat there going, right, if I jump up on one box and then jump up on the second box without him seeing me or making any sound, I'll be able to knife him. Like, I, I appreciate the attempt. Lightning fast shots coming out of KD in this round though. And this is what we like to see. Like, even if this map now slips away from them, at least we're seeing some of those individual plays which make this heroic roster so exciting. The other thing though is this is now not that far away. Like we still give this over slightly to the CT side. So Heroic are definitely not out of this. And if they can start to gain momentum, we know that they have probably the greatest cheerleader of all time in the form of Cadian. He'll be keeping everybody's morale up. I think that's one added thing that a lot of teams don't necessarily have. That's, that's why I actually have quite a lot of respect for someone like Neil M because he gets like good plays out of players that well, a lot of the time get down in the dump so you've got him screaming behind you and he'll get you rolling and while we're seeing some of those players step up the last two rounds for Tessas have been better than the rest of the map just, even just this, statistically so if he gets going storm continues Kadian starts hitting a few shots but who knows this might not be done just yet Vince definitely has that air of a comeback about it doesn't it Stout Outside, he's really started to deliver another 3k. He pinces in onto Estetag. Device has the right idea with a D, but just can't get any of them to land and stand with a 4k. And yeah, it's almost like this infectious enthusiasm. You can't help but be affected by it in a very positive way. You can see smiles on the face of Stown there as the camera cut to him. They're starting to enjoy this a little bit more. And why not? They have Astralis against the wall. They're turning up the heat. I was mentioned by uh, the desk earlier who they'd love to be playing with. Potter said, uh, Stown. And I can understand that. Uh, she might not get to AWP as much as she used to, if that's the case, because he's pretty meme of one. I think I'd take Kadian. I think I'd play much better with Kadian. Like, uh, bigging me up. Brop, though. Gonna meet a nasty fade, but here he is again. It's a TK in the mix, but Storm will claim four. It is a ridiculous round from him once again, just spraying down the investment from Astralis, and they're going to need a moment. They're going to need some time to reset after that one. The young star is coming up once again. And again, we see some slow starts initially for Heroic, but this man today has not had a single bad map. He had 73 kills in a best of three with two very one-sided maps earlier against Nip with ADR off the charts, with a rating off the charts. And now he's doing it against Astralis. This guy 
is a real threat to be reckoned with. And imagine certainly one for the future. One plus Phoenix. Sorry to cut you off. But just imagine turning down the opportunity to sign even just him. They had that in the bag. That might be one of the worst decisions in Counter-Strike history. <laughs> and Heroic are probably just sat there going, well, I'm glad we didn't sell this team. That would have been a severe under sale as what has become one of the best rosters in Counter-Strike over the last few months. Great bait and switch. KD Natesis, lockdown ramp. Minimal investment on Astralis, but absolutely. One of those situations where another Danish player has been overlooked. We mentioned North doing this a bunch of times in the past. But he is grabbing the attention right now, and no one can really deny the guy's ability. Device tagged and fragged by Nico. And Heroic have drawn this back to a two-round deficit. Astralis, it, it feels like they haven't won a round in forever at this point. I feel like someone needs to hire whoever was like the, the talent scout for Fragsters. Because I, I, I feel like that they'd done some pretty solid work. Bear in mind, for, for people who don't know about Fragsters, that was a team that had Refresh, Dragonfly, who is a, a Stown's brother, Stown himself and Bubski and also Torben as their in-game leader. So three of those players are still like high up within the pro scene. Two of them are arguably some of the hottest property in all of Counter-Strike right now. So whoever was the person doing the talent scouting for that team, give them a job, get them to find some more Danish players and you could be making, well, you, you could be making one of the best teams in the world of the future. I'm just putting it out there. Whoever it was, I'm not sure who, they did a fantastic job because they have helped build Danish Counter-Strike. Well, the Godfathers of CS for quite a while. Astralis is still in this game. Just because the momentum hasn't been working in their favor, we know at a moment's notice, a flick of some fingers and they can get straight into this and they can finish this map off. So Heroic, a bit more jovial, a little bit more relaxed, but do not lose focus. Do not lose concentration. Nico starting to make a move outside. Three players up close. It looks like they really want to fight for this. But they decide to back away instead. We're not going to see any spray up through the smoke this time. The bombs actually drop just behind lobby. Cadian, different angle. His approach, untenable. Goes under the radar, playing incognito. And now he snatches in for the opening pick. And once more, Heroic have the advantage. Once more, maybe they can bring Astralis down to their knees. And once more, Sound is delivering. Bar up on the cross. Glaive was never checking the angle. Too many other ones for him to watch out for. And it not only could be a round, it's going to be a clean one. They only lose one player in the process. If you're an Astralis fan right now, I think you're quaking in your boots. This has been a, a pretty decent streak of rounds coming out of the side of Heroic. In fact, oh, correct me if I'm wrong, I, I'm pretty sure this is seven rounds in a row. Well, Hadian's mentioned it in the past. He doesn't like the storyline of them being an underdog. They started off in this map falling a little bit flat. They're anything but the nades coming through and Tessas. He started to rise to the occasion. He had just two kills in the first half. He's already got two in this round. He'll eventually be put down. The rotation comes in, but the vice again. He hasn't been stopped. Whether or not the team has been succeeding over the last few rounds, he at least is still up there. Even still though. This round should not be possible. They're waiting patiently for the rotation to come in, but realistically, in their current state, a chance of a victory seems impossible. Device gonna try and do it alone. He's connected, another D could just need one more to potentially steal the round, but he eventually falls. It's on to Big Brain himself, looking for a 200 IQ play, but instead he walks right into the hands of Kadian. It's close and Device is still kicking. But the rest of Astralis have fallen deadly silent. Saw glimpses of brilliance with Device's Deagle, and this would have been his 4K. So close on those couple of shots. Dangerous game of whack-a-mole, but now Heroic, you were spot on. It was seven, now it's eight. Eight unanswered rounds on their CT side. There are money booming. For the rest of this half, regardless of what happens, they will have buys. There is no easy gimme round for Astralis in sight. They have got to come out swinging. They've used their tactical timeouts. 
They are out of options. They are running out of time. They need to get some entries, Tom, because it feels like they've been on the receiving end of like the last seven or eight rounds, losing the first player outside, getting orped, getting sprayed by Stown, just never really getting a foothold. And now he's changing up his angles again. Haven't really seen too many aggressive moments here. Cadian flashed through, not giving his position away, goes in for the peak. This could be a huge moment in this matchup. Sees the trajectory of the grenade. Stown moves in again. Spray is good for one, and he also dinks Magus, who survives on 15 HP. The incendiary will keep him at arm's reach and allow Cadian to stay outside a little bit longer. Stralis have had to change their play. This is something that just wasn't going to work. They're going to try and pressure Tessas once again. He's managed to find a decent angle, but has to just retreat. Manages to get back down the ramp and the chase is on. Astralis, they smell their prey, but what they don't realize is he's backed them into a trap. Cadian now waiting with the AWP and with 30 seconds left, or even a few slip-ups coming in. Pressure pushed onto this A-site and Nico's waiting for it. They have a crossfire set up. In fact, two players just waiting down below. They threat this perfectly, Vince. It's left all onto the vice once again. He has 12 seconds and it's turned into a save. At every turn, Astralis meet a heroic stack. They played that round to perfection and now they take the lead. Cadian is living in Astralis's head rent-free. He knows every single move they make before they even realize it. This is some exceptional Counter-Strike on Heroic. They were 5-0 behind, 10-5 behind at half-time, 13-5 behind, and now they lead. We said this the other day, Tom, it doesn't matter how long you trail as long as you end the map ahead. That's all that counts. And Heroic now two rounds away from converting, and the buy from Astralis is rough. Only two players have utility, and only one smoke left. This is the thing with Astralis, though. No matter what the situation, they can steal a round from you. No lapse in judgment is allowed for Heroic at this point. Their Danish counterparts are one that they're not going to take lightly. Nico is prepared, but the Molotov will force him off the angle deep enough that he can't reface the Mustang's position. They expect it. They're waiting for that man. They face off and take him out of the question for this round. 4v5. Nice shot from Dupree, though. They might need a little bit of magic from him right now. He's definitely not been as impactful as previously, but... Be honest, I put that down to what is a massive resurgence from the heroic side. It is Stown that has been put a peg into the grave here, which is significant. He has been one of their heavy hitters. As you highlight, it's not just been a one-man show. He's had a supporting cast. The likes of Tess is standing up. Burrup's had some big moments. Cadian's been flicking left and right, had some really, really big rounds. And with 22 seconds, Astralis... Need to start making a move. Nico narrowly misses out the head. That could be costly. It's the vice that still stands and actually <laughs> drills him through the wall in the head. And with that pick, that should be the round going the way of Astralis. And you go back to the what ifs. What if Nico carves his head off when he had the opportunity in control room, Tom? That could have been the round. That could have been the map. Well, yeah, I, I saw him looking towards the glass. And now, obviously, the glass does sort of shroud your vision a little bit. But I do wonder if he saw the scope and just decided to leave him be. Now, if I'm heroic here, what have you got? What have you got to lose? Your money is through the roof. Are you going to be able to buy until overtime? There's no doubt about that. Can you do some damage here? Can you take some weaponry away? Can you even upgrade to an AK? It's a small victory, but it's something nonetheless. And they are looking to try and hold these remaining players in. Tessus, he goes hunting, but he's eventually shot down. No real extra damage done, and we go back to an even scoreline. Now, I'll bring you back to the very beginning of this tournament. It is fitting that it comes right through to the end of it as well. The last time these two teams played... There was a Vertigo map that went 28 and 24. That was the opener of the series, which Astralis went on to win. Heroic are going to want to try and steal this one away from them. This was a pick for them, of course. One that we 
New was a risk, even though they beat them last time, because Astralis are more than competent on this map. However, they've made a fantastic comeback. And they get it over the line. This is a huge risk from Stown. He's going to get away with it, though. One of the main ways they got back into this game was off huge risks. Stown with that audacious play through lobby, peaking multiple times. Back at 13-5. feel like a different lifetime ago on Astralis right now, but they are making moves downstairs. They've not lost any early players, which has been the exception to the rule up until this point. They've typically lost one or two in their endeavors downstairs. Down though, up close, flashbang, comes out. M4 is good. He has surrounded by players, but Nico has his back covered and he still stands for a little bit longer. Even though he's fallen, the damage has been done. It's been briskly and swiftly put into the opposition Danes and now Magisk in a one on four no control over the bomb. No idea where all these CTs reside. Now knows that Tess is to his right-hand side. Takes him off. Executes him down. 46 HP. Separating Mages. Separating Astralis. And a map point for Heroic. And they deliver. They have a chance to take their map pick after being behind pretty much the entire map. Oh, we've always seen sheer tenacity of this heroic roster but i think you've just seen it embodied in full they were so far down i think you mentioned it was it 13 5 yep since then they've lost just one round and that was actually to level things up once again now for both sides there is an investment but let's be real one of them is far worse the cts with a, a bank of cash to spare, and on the other side, their Danish brothers are almost asking for a small donation. Glaive left on a UMP, a gun he's happy to use, an S tag onto a Galil. They do have the big green on device at least, but that's without armor, grenades, or anything else. However, in this map, that's all he's really needed. is an orthodox position on Cadian, but because he's mixed his angles up so many times, Cadian nearly gets punished. Shoulder peeking the angle. And now Cadian flashed out of position, has to give outside control up to the Ps and Dupree, some aggression. Now turning the tides, not allowing Heroic to get comfortable, not allowing them to get set up in their positions. Tessis locking it out through lockers, but actually he gets shoved in there. And Dupree, the bully, now changing his options to go up into heaven and try and rain down some fire onto the defenders on a site. Spotting another player. Not only has he got himself two kills, he's got tons of information and device. I mean, no chill to Stown, and there's Nico. They just drop down one by one, and they are being perforated where they stand. It's looking good to go overtime again. Unless Burrup can pull off something truly miraculous. What? The device three no scopes in the same round? Okay, then. We're going to need a breather to understand what on earth just happened. We'll be back after a short break. And now overtime falls upon us, but it was 13 5. Astralis able to reset, make sure he didn't concede the map at least. But many, myself included, thought that this would have already been a done deal. Yet here we stand. All open for business. One team moves to the grand finals to face Vitality. One team is eliminated. Let's find out who picks up the first map. Well, I said it when we just seen nine rounds in a row from Heroic. There is no time in any match that you can count out Astralis. The same we could say from Heroic after being that far down. And now all that has gone before is null and void. It doesn't matter. It's meaningless. Now money... It's 10k. Nobody likes it, but we're going to try and not talk about it because it does mean that we can see Ecos in overtime. Now, Glaive is already going to start things off onto Nico. The aggression outside has been a common theme for Heroic, but over the last couple of rounds, we have seen some adaptations from Astralis. Now they're slowing right down. And the thing is, once you commit to aggression, the only real response is more aggression. And because of that, they're now two men down with the same result.
It's down and Nico already has been silenced. Kading could flick onto Magus. I was wondering if he'd come out second best in that, if timing would work against him because the smoke was about to clear. 30 seconds. Tessis, who moved outside of ramp, now goes back in there again, but it's Dupree, who has found his form once again with the AK. Insta headshot, Kadian through the fire, through the flames, into a stray bullet. And Astralis claimed first blood in overtime, and the smiles are back again. See, that's the thing. I, I, that's one thing I've never understood. I, one thing I never think I could, I could achieve as a professional player is to throw away a lead that big, win a round, and just be like, <laughs> that's fun. Like, I, I feel like I'd be so stressed in those moments. And I guess with a with Astralis, it's a, it's a daily occurrence, something they've been through so many times. But I don't know how you get used to that. And once again, we see an investment, but already the cracks are starting to show a little bit for Heroic. Look at the amount of money they have left. If they lose this round, they go in with pistols and SMGs. Not what you want to see in overtime, but unfortunately, that's the reality we sit in. Pess has had a real resurgence in the second half. Still not quite where he'd like to be, but as said, stats at this point don't matter. It's all about the rounds. Oh, that's so unfortunate. Device gets saved by the box and Kadian misses his opportunity to even the odds. Device now with a peek onto Nico. And just as Tom highlighted, the economy on Heroic could not support all these casualties. So this is looking like it could easily be a clean sweep, but Stown, that man, there has been a real linchpin on so many of these rounds on the comeback trail is still standing alongside Borup, but I feel like it will be that bitter medication that they have to take down here for the save. They can't really afford anything else. Now, maybe if Device gets picked off, that's not the can trade hands. Kadian can get himself back into that one. He was weakened by Tessis earlier on on Secret, now gets finished off. So that will be a naught picked up. And that would be a nice bonus, but ultimately, it still will read 1715. Stown is flicking left and right, getting aggressive again, but that's at the cost of his life. Meaning not only do they not save the AWP, but they only keep one weapon going through. Somebody is getting wrecked in terms of their weaponry here on Heroic. Yeah, I, I don't even think it's just, I think it's a multiple players are going to be having some real troubles when it comes to the finances in the next round. Tessus. SMG, Barup, Shotgun. Now, we saw him pull out the shotgun many a time. Uh, was, was really very successful. I'm not saying I'm... Uh, I, I love a shotgun, Vince. Like, you know me. I do like the XM. But I like it when it works, which uh, I guess most people do. It's not really very exciting if they just get wrecked. The question is, can he make it work? Because the, the one thing I will say about these sort of rounds is normally you see teams throw in something a bit more spicy when you have problems with your economy. You're going to try and be more aggressive. You're going to try and take real risks in these sort of rounds. And a lot of the time, that's why you see teams actually win these third rounds more often than not, because you have a specific plan in mind rather than just your default rounds. Now for Barup, he is in a prime position here. But the fact is Astralis are being very careful. I think they know as well as we do that this is not going to be a good purchase for Heroic. So they're not taking any risks. They're waiting to see if there is going to be the same level of aggression that they had real troubles with in a lot of the CT rounds that occurred and came up for Heroic. This time, though, it looks like Ramp is the key to their play. And Tessas has spotted a lot of players. There's a second man, though. Yeah, and that Molotov forces them out. They're not going to check this angle. Only one kill forthcoming, but Device, Acid Tag, Dupree, all tagged. Just a split second away from their demise. Borup, the flank. He wants to lock it down with the XM. It was something like six rounds in a row where he failed to get a frag last time around. But he may be able to jump in here. Actually goes back to try and pick up the assault rifle, decides against it. Only three players left and 12 seconds allocated to Astralis, who looked to dip down onto the site. All three players weakened, very close to their demise. Device is still waiting outside. The bomb does get planted. This is where Device's position could be oh. so brutal, but Barup spotted him. This is where he wished he had anything but the <laughs> XM. Fortunately, though, Kadian comes to his rescue. There's a boost up, 
a bit what of an off this? angle you probably don't expect to be the CTs, but they have spotted it and they have dwindled away at Dupree and now Esetag. There will be no clean sweep. It was looking grim, but Heroic do bounce back. But that's the thing, like, it, you sort of spoke about the boost that was coming in from Dupree. I'm almost more interested in the boost that was coming in from the CT side on the other side. Like, they were boosting to almost peer back through the gap. I like it. Like, look, look at this. They're boosting over the top of the boxes. That's really cool. I don't think we'd see that anywhere near as often as the, the players at the back of the site. But it, it's exactly what I said, Vince. It's one of those scenarios where teams in those rounds take big risks they took a gamble on the ramp it pays off they then waste an awful lot of time for astralis and somehow it always seems to happen that those rounds where you actually have a weekend purchase end up working out now this is something we witnessed a few times s tag now picking up that secondary orb once again it's one that seems to be very map specific for new because he does normally play onto that ramp side the question is can Cadian work as that can opener and ruin either one of these AWPers day. If the investment may catch up to them, as it did for Heroic. Just want to highlight as well, by the way, that Stown, 33 kills, around 100 ADR. Nearest player is Device, with 82. There is a big discrepancy between Stown and the rest of his teammates. The device has been head and shoulders above the rest of his team as well. So it really is a two horse race with support and cast trying desperately to clamber on to any opportunity afforded to them. But device neutralizes Kadian outside. He tries to rummage away, but Borok does get him in transition. And now it's back to this longer range skirmish. Tess is with two massively impactful entry frags. And Esetag joined and greeted by a Molotov. Cannot make the most of that heaven push. And with 10k being in play, to start things off, he has to think about saving. That does bring Heroic back to an even keel. I, I know that I, I know that we always mention this, but please, 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 just not 10k. I know that there's some people like, oh, well, yeah, you can see auto-snipers. I'd rather see that than saves. Like, if it's a choice between auto-snipers and saves, I'll take auto-snipers every day of the week. Because... This is not what we want in overtime. It's a fantastic round from Heroic. Let's not take it away from them. But I want to see this man try a 1v3 with an all. I don't want to see him sat in a corner trying to hold on to it and being slowly hunted by the members of Heroic who are not going to take it away. It will be kept. The question is, will it be kept by Aztec? Or is he going to... He's going to ham one off, but does he buy another one? Because it didn't work too well in the last round, especially with the pace. This is something we mention all the time with Heroic. They love these fast takes and doing it in overtime is something that I will always respect the team for because there is so much on the line. We've got multiple overtimes last time between these two teams. They didn't get it sealed and delivered on the first time of asking. Glaive behind the smoke wall. I'm here for some information to relay to the rest of the troops. Devices downstairs. Anticipating that this wall of smokes may very well yield a push into his angle. He has the perfect angle to deal with this, but it's a bit oh. slow. From considering he's on 31 kills, you really expect him to land that. Esetag and Glaive both come in with frags, but just proving that Device is mortal yet. Magis, big entry onto Tessis, back into the site again, but not anticipating that he gets peeked simultaneously from the doors and behind Silo. And Glaive has taken this momentary chaos to try and get up close and decon. He needs Dupree to lend him a massive helping hand. He sticks on the bomb. Oh. He doesn't have a kit, though, and he gets punished. Kadian comes in with a frag. He's been tagged down, but goes for a re-peek and will reap the rewards. Heroic with a map point. I remember early in this game where we were talking about the sacrifices of Cadian. He was sat down on two kills and really not have... No, actually, in fact, he was 007. Well, he's just hit 22. And as said, the stats from before are completely meaningless. He's hit the shots when it mattered. Now, the saves they had previously actually give Astralis at least a buy in this one. It's, it's not anywhere near the best they could hope for. In fact, utility after just... 15 seconds is down to a single flashbang of smoke. It mentioned they didn't have a kit in the last round or they didn't pick one up. They don't have one here at all. 
So this really is one of those rounds where Astralis have to dig deep. Now, they did it in the last half. To bring it to overtime the first time, they had buys that were definitely not ideal. And while there is this man again. You mentioned that maybe he should have hit the shot in the last round. He connects it in this, but there's an instant response. And this gives up the ramp. But up, it seems like he's just going to go barreling onto the site. But there is a man they might not expect to be here so soon. But what? He is saved by the bar. Glaive goes down. It's another man lost. A man advantage kept by Heroics down, however, has fallen. The peak comes back in for Magisk over the last few rounds. He's gone huge. And this time, he gives them an advantage in the retake. No utility and the lack of kit starts to come to the forefront. Astralis know they have to mix up the pace. They have to get up close. Cadian. Plenty of utility, including a smoke and a molotov. Burrup, perched in the back of the side, gets triple peaked, and it's Magisk who gets the third. Cadian now needs to rip around the corner, needs to have impact. He's waiting. He's waiting so long. He finally gets the frag, but it's not going to be good enough. And we move to second overtime. Dear Lord. It, it, it's getting sweaty back here, that's for sure. This play from Magisk unbelievable like uh, the, uh, the fat mash shouldn't work like that i don't care <laughs> i can't do that there is yeah maybe he's a major like, mvp but that, that's not the point well we're right back to square one as said everything that comes before is meaningless and glaive this is where he looks to try and get a little bit more aggressive the smoke wall has fallen and then, if anything that's helped him get away and you can see both teams do this. They like to watch the edge of the smoke, start to play around the back of them because it's a very common thing to try and make plays through these smokes. And in fact, Heroic are looking to do just that. Device is ready and waiting though. And Glaive, in fact, was watching as well. Nico's at least managed to find one and he almost finds one through a smoke and the vent. Now, S-Tag has been taken out the last couple of rounds. He needs to do something here. If anything, falling back might be the right play. They've already got a man to the good. And this time he'll escape. And to the good, but actually behind in terms of overall HP. Well, you can scratch that statistic. That's no longer the case. Stown has been dealt a hefty blow. Magisk on 14 HP, really coming alive in these last few rounds. And Dupree will tag team in with Magisk flashbang. Astralis take the lead again. We thought this game would deliver, and so far it has, Tom. Yeah, I wonder how many we can go for this time. That's that's the question on my mind, at least. Again, a purchase for either side. And most of the time when it's the T's having the losses, you can expect repurchases. The nade damage already has gone through the roof. And well, Glaive has taken some control. I think they know he's here. They spotted him walk in that direction. So they're starting to try and nade him out of position. But... As of right now, they haven't hit him at all. In fact, he's perfectly healthy. Do they bypass this double-pronged threat? No, Device, just wide peaks, wide swings. If they fully bite down on Device's position, keep in mind that Glaive is laid in wait, cunning. Can I even calculate it? Device is still drawing fire to his location, still standing, still delivering. And even though Dupree has fallen to the hands of Nico, they're still in a bit of trouble. Device just isn't missing now. Making amends from a few rounds ago, but Heroic, sneaking under the radar, are still doing a bunch of damage of their own accord, and Device comes in with his 4K. He's landed 37 kills. It had started off as a competition between him and Sam, but over the last few rounds, that competition has only gone in one direction, and... Well, as said, there's a reason he's one of the best players of all time. A consistent fragger, someone you can always fear when entering the server. And on the CT side, he has been just that. 20 to 18, Heroic have still had to take some serious concessions going into this round, but it looks like they're going to try and build in to a fast, aggressive play. Magic is already gone, and Tessus with a double entry. Make that a third come up for Stown. Device this time will miss, and that might be the end of him. S-Tag, he may be off to Cloud9, but this time he needs four for his team. Astralis 
at least for the next match or two, is where his home lies. But he's actually walked past. And we did see Stown turn around for at least a second. I have a question that he might have actually spotted his opponent and look at them all just start to swarm in. It is going to be around at least again the same result with Heroic taking the third round after losing the first two. It seems like the lower buys still work for them. It's a team that simply put are never out of the fight so often. We've casted him in only this tournament, and we felt like it was probably over. And then suddenly, they snap back into action. They activate. They get it done. Strahler still in the lead. Make no mistake, they still can definitely put this to rest. Of course, 22 is the number that they're both jockeying for now. Strahler's one round closer to that mark. This being the choice of Heroic. Next map would be Inferno. And if we need it, we have the tantalizing prospect, Tom, of a repeat performance on Vertigo, which is the very map that we had multiple overtimes on the very first day of DreamHack Open 4. Yeah, I'm, I'm starting to think that it's a good thing that it's uh, the, the lovely Scronders doing the grand final, because we could be here all night long at this rate. Device, though, this is quite a bit of ground. Storm, however, waiting for him on the other side. A double orb thrown in from Heroic. A, a little bit of a different spice to this round as they've changed things up completely. This isn't something we've seen from them whatsoever, but a gimmick that could steal them around. That's exactly what they need right now. Down the vent they go. There's another orb there, and the no scope landed as well. Even the quick scope, whatever you want to call it. It's left on to Dupree. A one burst is four. He's only kept things even so far, so he'd have to hit the 30 bomb right now and just look at them. They're homed in. He's surrounded, and he has 30 seconds left. He is being swarmed. He does at least have the bomb, and the trajectory to get down to the site can save plant. No one can deny this just yet, but they are going to get very, very close on the approach. Molotov behind him. Needs to stand his ground. He knows every second he stays out in the open is one closer to death. And it's Cadian, the Grim Reaper, that comes in, takes him out, and we're all even again. They'll just delay a little bit more time so they can get as much of the fixings and upgrades for AKs and a couple of extra grenades as possible. Keeping four players alive as well in that round. That was sublime. I, I do love how I, I sort of mentioned literally a round ago that it, it seemed like Device had finally taken the lead in this battle and then Stan just goes, well, you, you haven't seen my orb yet. 38 for him. Reclaiming the top fragger of the server. It is a two horse race. Nobody else is even close. The next is 26. The form of Dupree, 11 kills behind the other two. And while the third overtime, it's not unlikely at this point, Vince. Oh, it's looking more and more likely, isn't it? We need a team to 2-0 from this point to take us there. Both teams will be able to buy again in the next round, regardless of saves or any of that kind of stuff coming into play. Device entering the arena against Stown. He was peering down into Squeaky, waiting for some aggression. Keep in mind, when they were down 13-5, these are the kind of plays that they were cognizant of. But Stown holds on patiently, passively, and Cadian gets Dupree walking into his crosshair. A repeat performance from the last round. They take the first two opening picks. And Astralis now, after play as a trio, and look to puncture through into the site. The bomb's also dropped, and in amongst all of that, Stown now shows his hand again. He may not have got the kill onto Glaive, but he did so much damage to him that another bullet, and he is going to be laid down permanently. Tess is straight back in for another one. Esetag just doing his due diligence to make sure these angles don't have a CT that's found the bomb. And that's really the only thing that is going in favor of Astralis. Everything else is stacked against them. Tessis laid in wait. Down on Glaive. 10 seconds left. Esetag <laughs> needs to try and somehow clutch this out <laughs> with no time and no hope. And Heroic with another map point. You gotta love it. 
little bit of door play. And, and he's someone else that we, we sort of haven't mentioned too much. But there was a point where I don't remember the exact stat, but what Tessus was like two kills and like, I want to say like 15 deaths. He's had a real comeback. He's up to 18. And while one of the difference makers for sure with a few multi-frag rounds. But this is where Astralis play their best Counter-Strike. Up against the wall, pinned into the corner. Fighting out, lashing out to try and survive. That's the spot they're in once again. As Heroic have another map point. There are a few teams that dare pick Nuke. In fact, I, no, no, let's change that. There are no teams that dare pick Nuke into Astralis. There is only one team over the last few months that's beaten them. And we're watching them right now in the lead. 21 for Heroic. Another attempt to take this first map and lead into Inferno. Question is, can they finally do it? Because they've had chances already, Vince. Oh, they've had chance after chance. Astralis, even though they led for the vast majority of this map, when it came down to the wire, it was always them saving map points, not imposing their will. But just desperately clambering on for extra lifelines. Here comes the play. It could be the final one of Nuke. And Burrup holds on for two kills single-handedly. Maybe taking this away from Astralis. Mages one on four. He's got the first, but his position is known. And Tessie stands up. Tall delivers the headshot. That's all she wrote for Nuke. Heroic have took their choice. They have come back from 13-5 down to win it in the overtimes. Of course, there is plenty 